Good afternoon. I'm Muriel Bowser. I'm the mayor of Washington, D.C. I am joined by members of my public safety team uh, and uh, members of federal law enforcement. Uh, we briefed you yesterday uh, and provided information on a man we believed who was responsible uh, for attacking men experiencing homelessness in Washington, D.C. and New York City, uh, resulting in at least two deaths. I was joined by the mayor of New York City and members of his public safety team as well. This morning, I am pleased to report uh, that law enforcement teams arrested that individual who is suspected of targeting and violently attacking members of our community. I want to thank MT MPD, ATF, NYPD, and Mayor Adams for their collaboration and for their quick work. I want to especially call out the detectives of the Metropolitan Police Department uh, who noticed uh, the similarities of these crimes, who worked with federal law enforcement, uh, and who have contributed to this quick arrest. I want to turn to Chief Conti um, to provide the details. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> Yesterday, I stood with Mayor Bowser, Mayor Adams, Commissioner Sewell, as well as Special Agent in Charge of the ATF Washington Field Office, Charlie Patterson. And our message was clear. There was an urgent call to our communities to assist law enforcement, and that collectively we would leave no stone unturned to find this individual. Today, I am here to announce we've got our man. At 2.30, at approximately 2.30, AM, 30-year-old Gerald Brevard of Southeast DC was taken into custody by our partners in the Washington Field Office of the ATF. Our partnership with the community and across the criminal justice system proved extremely valuable, leading us to a swift identification of our suspect and ultimate apprehension here in Washington DC. On yesterday afternoon, MPD received an anonymous tip providing us a positive identity, the, a possible identity of a suspect. Later that afternoon, the suspect posted a social media photo that appeared to be in the District of Columbia. Law enforcement attempted to locate him but were initially unsuccessful. At our joint agency press conference, we released quality images of the suspect that were captured from an ATM at Union Station on March 9th. Additional tips came into our Command Information Center and passed along to investigators. Based on the information we received, law enforcement began canvassing areas across the city for Mr. Brevard. ATF agents ultimately located suspect Brevard in the 2300 block of Pennsylvania Avenue Southeast where he was stopped and placed under arrest. Mr. Brevard was charged in each of the district's three offenses. Charges include first-degree murder while armed for the shooting and stabbing homicide of 54-year-old Morgan Holmes on March 9th, the assault with the intent to kill for the shooting offense on March 8th, and assault with a dangerous weapon for the initial shooting offense on March 3rd. Additional charges for offenses committed in New York are anticipated. The investigation is ongoing, but I must acknowledge the outstanding work of our partners and MPD detectives. The Nyben Investigations Unit from the Metropolitan Police Department, the Arson Task Force, the United States Attorney's Office, the, no, no, the New York City Police Department, as well as the United States Attorney's Office, uh, the District of Virginia, the ATF, 
and MPD's Homicide Branch and Violent Crime Suppression Division all did outstanding work. I would also like to thank our community and the many and the many others along the East Coast that provided us critical information and tips. I send my condolences to the families and friends of the victims here in D.C. and in New York City. We hope that Brevard's arrest provides a sense of closure for you, but also relief to our vulnerable homeless population uh, here in the District of Columbia. This case is an example of what happens when there is good police work, science, and community support. It's a demonstration of how quickly we can close homicide cases when all three of those things are working together. I want to, at this time, invite Charlie Patterson from the ATF Washington Field, Divi Washington Field Division up for some brief remarks. Thank you, Chief and Madam Mayor. Good afternoon. My name is Charlie Patterson. I'm the special agent in charge of the ATF Washington Field Division. On behalf of ATF, I would like to offer our deepest condolences to the many family members and friends affected by this uh, act of uh, census violence. I am relieved to tell you that we have arrested the suspect in these shootings. After an intense investigation, ATF Washington Field Division took the suspect into custody at approximately 2.30 a.m. ATF Special Agents located him in the 2300 block of Pennsylvania Avenue, Southeast Washington, D.C. The suspect was transported by ATF Special Agents to the Metropolitan Police Department's Homicide Branch for questioning in the five shootings targeting homeless men in D.C. and New York City over the past two weeks. ATF spared no resource in this investigation. This case was our primary focus and we worked closely with our law enforcement partners in D.C. and New York City, bringing all of our respective investigative skills and unique cap capabilities to the investigation. We would like to thank the ATF New York Field Division for their quick response and support by expediting the process of recovering ballistic evidence, which was vital in this case. The National Integrated Ballistics Information Network, or NIBIN, was particularly crucial in this investigation, allowing us to quickly match ballistic evidence connecting all five shootings to the same firearm. ATF Washington Special Agents work collectively with our local partners every day to combat gun violence in an effort to maintain public safety, and we will continue carrying out this mission one violent offender after another. I also want to thank our valuable community members who provided critical tips to law enforcement during this investigation. We truly appreciate you. Anyone with further information on this case can contact the ATF at 1-888-ATF-TIPS. Thank you. Hey, Mark. About an hour ago, New York City held a press conference where they said that the suspect remains a person of interest, but they do not have enough to charge him right now, that a gun was not found uh, on him, and that they're here in town working with your detectives. Why are you so confident that you have the right man when, when they're not? Did you find a gun, and is he cooperating? We do not have a firearm at this point, uh, but based on all the evidence that we pulled together uh, in this case, uh, the video evidence, the images that we've seen, uh, this individual, uh, we believe, I'm very confident that this is the person. We feel we have enough probable cause to charge that person uh, with the crimes that have occurred here in the District of Columbia. Sam, yeah. So yeah. the uh, NYPD also said that there was a D.C. police a detective who was looking, I guess, followed New York, and who uh, immediately made the connection. Who was that? You missed the press conference yesterday, <laughs> Sam. I, I, I was doing news at the time. So <laughs> Captain Kevin Kentish, come here, Kevin. He's a New York native, but he's head of the uh, homicide branch here in Washington, D.C. That's my guy. and. Uh, so let, let, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make the connection for you, Sam. I got you. Look, man, don't look. Don't put my, my captain on spot right now. Let me tell you what happened, Sam. So here's what happened for the benefit of Sam, everyone. Yeah, uh, he was going through uh, social. He was going through social media uh, because he is a native New Yorker. So he still kind of follows follows, you know, what's happening in New York. And as he was going through the social media in New York, uh, there was an image out there, this image of this individual who has shot the homeless person. 
um, uh, was out there on social media. Kevin saw that, that, uh, that image. Uh, he took that back to his team who's working on this case. It was like, hey, look, this looks like our guy. They basically went over, they contacted uh, the authorities in New York, uh, started working on it. We told them what we had. We told them about the forensic uh, evidence that we had with respect to the specific caliber firearm that was used in this case. Uh, very sim similar uh, case in, in, in New York City. And as we started pulling things together, our partners at the ATF tested our evidence that was recovered. They tested the evidence that was recovered in New York, and we got a hit. So... So, and before and prior, prior to that, uh, so MP, within MP, that was Kevin's role in the, in the, in the, on the back end part, but prior to that, uh, there was linkages that happened here in the District of Columbia. And so the first instance uh, where the individual was shot, uh, actually that, that, that was a late report to the Metropolitan Police Department. The guy, uh, he thought he got shot with a pellet gun, actually. So it was a late report to MPD. So we had to kind of go back on that case and found some evidence in that case and then link that to the the next case that happened and then when the guy was murdered inside of the tent uh initially we didn't know that the guy was murdered right because of the thermal burns etc but going through and finding evidence on that scene we were able to then link those three cases together so it was just an incredible amount of detective work science and community support that really kind of brought all this together for us to be able to stand here before you today and announce the closure that we have. So I'm very confident to answer your question. Now, now you'll never just skip one of your press conferences. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> um, just how critical was the, just how critical were the tips from the, from the community in making this arrest? Extremely important. We expect to pay out uh, in this case uh, following the arrest and conviction of this individual. It was extremely helpful. Uh, tips came in from all over and again that that is what public safety true public safety looks like right when the police are doing their responsibility and we have the science to handle all the things in the background and you have people in community who see and know what happens in community when they are sharing that information with police that's how you close homicide cases when one of those things are not working it's just it overloads one part of the system so uh yeah we fully expect to pay out and it was extremely helpful to making sure that we really kind of tied everything together and is it fair to say that finding the gun is the biggest kind of missing piece here still it's an important piece but uh we make cases every day where we don't have a firearm so uh you know it is an important piece but we we'd like to get it if someone is out there with information who knows where this particular firearm is or knows uh, where this individual has been. Uh, we'll be checking all of that stuff, but uh, it's very important to us. Yes, sir. How about in terms of a, of a motive? When you spoke to him or when you, take, when you took him into custody, did he say anything? Did he offer anything in terms of a motive as to why he was doing this? Yeah, well, he, he has not offered a motive. Evan? Uh, this goes along those lines, but I wonder if you've learned at any point in the investigation so far does he have any connection to these victims, or does it appear to be totally random? We're not certain that he has a connection to the victims or not. Uh, it, we believe that it's 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 random. Um, you know, I, I don't know that he knew these guys in New York. You know, definitely here in Washington, D.C., it's just really hard to say specifically that he actually knows these individuals or there was something that... Um, that happened before this, and we're, we're, we're not aware of anything like that. Can you spell uh, that victim's name for me? The uh, Gerald, G-E-R, oh, oh, the victim, I'm sorry. Uh, the victim in this case of um, Morgan Holmes, M-O-R-G-A-N-H-O-L-M-E-S, 54, year, uh, 54 years of age uh, at the time of this passing, yes. Okay, Chief, um, can you kind of describe what happened during the arrest and surveillance video? We see him kind of dart out a little bit at the gas station, but then he throws his hands up. So the other question to that is, um, So with respect to the arrest, uh, you know, at the time that the officers are, or the uh, agents were closing in on him, uh, he attempted to flee briefly, but uh, they, they were quickly able to apprehend him. Uh, with respect to, uh, you know, his mental state, you know, just kind of where he is, I think we have some other members of our team that may be able to better, uh, better address that. Uh, obviously, that will we'll investigate, you know, what we need to investigate, but uh, I'll leave that to the experts. Good afternoon. Uh, this gentleman, can can you hear me now? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Dr. Barbara Bazron. I'm the director of the Department of Behavioral Health for the District of Columbia. Uh, with respect to, uh, to this, this um, individual, he um, uh, was enrolled in uh, services at one of the four service agencies um, in 2018. He also uh, was inpatient at St. Elizabeth's Hospital in 2019 for a competency assessment. Um, a competency, ass competency assessment is a done to determine whether or not an individual can participate fully uh, in their defense uh, within the court system. He was found to be uh, competent to participate um, in his defense and was uh, released back to jail um, and uh, that was the only time he was in our hospital. I, is that the case you're referring to that he was found competent? Um, in 2019, um, uh, he oh, said. In 2019, he's he charged? No. No. I, I don't know anything about Fairfax County. To correct that, so he had uh, previous cases in Fairfax County, but he also had DC charges in 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. One involved assault with a weapon, then the other right. one was assault from an officer. And I think the chief can speak to those. Yeah, to so, uh, yes to what you just said with respect to uh, he was arrested uh, in the District of Columbia, uh, I think uh, as early as 2016, but to your point, uh, back in 2018, uh, there was an arrest for assault and an officer. There was also uh, another arrest for ADW uh, knife. Yes. Think, uh, the metro do you think the train in and also as far as his whereabouts that day like were you able to trace back where he was and work backwards yeah so uh, with respect to how he got to New York we're still investigating that we have some assumptions but we want to be certain about that um, and then your question about uh, were we able to to, to kind of trace yeah we were able to uh, kind of really kind of link up where these crimes occurred with where uh, he was. Like I said, I think there's uh, substantial evidence that we have recovered, uh, video uh, evidence, um, electronic evidence that supports that. So we feel very confident um, uh, that this is uh, certainly our guy. I'll go over here. I don't, I, we don't know that. Yes, ma'am. We understand that you received tips about the sus suspect's identity from his family and people who knew him from the court system. Can you confirm those reports? I, I will not confirm who called in the tips. Next question. Yes, sir question for the uh, ATF. You were talking about technology that was used and how crucial technology was in all this. And I spoke to a security expert yesterday that says the ATF has technology where you can almost read you know, forensic evidence or fingerprints off bullets. Was that type of technology used? And again, just briefly describe how technology was used in all this. So from, from the standpoint of the ballistics evidence, we'll, we'll just say our Niven, what I just mentioned, was, was critical in this case in terms of having an examiner look at those shell casings in real time um, uh, expediently to make a match. Um, can't say enough about our National Correlation Center that's down in Huntsville, Alabama, where we can have people in there 24-7 to look at those shell casings and make those determinations. Critical. Um, so a question for you when it comes to uh, press conferences on this, obviously they didn't happen until after the New York case. Was there something in the New York case that it elevated this to something to have a press conference and that sort of thing? I know press releases didn't go out. No, so the, the issue was really kind of at the, again, they're going through hundreds of hours of video and everything, really trying to pull all these pieces together. Uh, at the point where, you know, the link was made was actually, again, when, as we looked at the DC cases, you know, and then looking at the New York image, like ah, that's similar to something that we just got a hold of. So let's put these things together. So I mean, you're talking about a major incident over the course, of, you know, from March 3rd to present day. You know, being events happen, videos and so forth reviewed, case closed, evidence checked, and so I mean, that's an incredible amount of investigative work. 
I mean, I know, you know, I know people watch CSI and all that kind of stuff and think it happens in 60 minutes, but that's an incredible amount of work to happen in a very short period of time. Yes, ma'am. Although, um, Although this suspect is in custody, what message do you have for people in our community that are experiencing homelessness that may still be concerned about their safety? Yeah, well, you know, the mayor talked um, uh, very, very well yesterday, as well as Mayor um, Adams, about the things that we're doing in our city to make sure that people are not in a space where they have to experience homelessness. You know, the mayor can certainly address that, but from the Metropolitan Police Department standpoint, the Metropolitan Police Department is here to make sure that all residents, including our unhoused residents, feel safe in our city. And we do that through our patrols, we do that through our community interaction and engagement, and we'll continue to do that. And hopefully, uh, if there is ever a time that we need to utilize uh, the, the, the resources of our federal partners and all that kind of stuff, that we will continue to get community support to make sure that residents, including our homeless residents, are safe. Uh, the two surviving victims, you yeah. gave a, a brief update about them yesterday, but yes. are they in the hospital or can you say any more about how they're doing? I'm not going to say a lot more about them other than the fact that they are recovering. They are witnesses at this point. about the effort to take this man into custody, any special task forces that were used, was this a special situation where you had a tip where you knew he was going to be in that location and you were waiting for him, or, or how did that unfold for you? Well, I won't get into the specifics of the investigation. I'll just say that um, uh, the uh, a couple of groups in our office uh, were um, actively surveilling that area uh, and uh, were, at, were able to... Uh, find him uh, in that particular block of Pennsylvania Avenue and uh, effect the arrest. Any idea why he was out at 2.30 in the morning this morning? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but uh, I can just tell you that uh, the incidences uh, that occurred with the shootings were out that about that time of morning, so he, he's normally out that time of day, or that time of morning. Hold on one second. Next. Mayor, yesterday I talked to several uh, homeless people in the city, and they told me two things. One, they are afraid, some of them, to go to a shelter. They say that those shelters are not safe, and they would like to see more help to find jobs within the city. What would you say to them? Well, uh, most people, if they're living on the street in the tent, they need some stabilization uh, in order that they are ready for work. Uh, and that is why we're very focused on making sure that our emergency low barrier shelters can serve them, uh, but also making sure that we're investing in those shelters so people do feel cared for, they can deal with their emergency, they can get to work. Some people are using the shelter and going to work every day. Uh, and we know uh, that our program, we call it the CARES Pilot, uh, it is intended for our outreach workers to go uh, to anyone who's living in a tent, unhoused on the street, to make sure they are familiar with the services that are provided and that we can get them into shelter. So that, that is what I will continue to emphasize to people. Um, I heard somebody say, all of us uh, who are privileged to be of sound mind and body and spirit and work hard every day and have our own place, even when we go at home, we lock the door. You can't do that on the street. It's inherently unsafe. Uh, and so that's why we want to connect people with shelter and housing. Yes. That this suspect, I mean, both you and the mayor yesterday were pretty dire about getting him off the street. It only took 10 hours about since you released that last picture. Can you talk about your relief that he's off the street? I am relieved. Um, but I'm also challenged by the, the, the question that was just asked. If we can do this in this case, we can do it in every case. Uh, and MPD is producing a lot of video image. We put up a $70,000 um, reward and the community came forward and we're gonna work hard uh, to make sure that there's justice for these victims. So yes, I am relieved, but I knew, I, I told people yesterday, we didn't know who this guy was or where he lived, but I knew that if he was in DC with that image, he would be found. Uh, and I'm grateful for the detective work um, that's happened here, the police work, the ATF, the ATF partnership uh, to get this person, uh, this suspect off the street. Do you know if he was at that area that he was trying to catch one of the discount buses that run through that corridor, possibly trying to leave town? 
I don't know, Mark. Uh, it, that's any, anyone's guess why, but we're not certain about that. Right, a couple more questions. Say again? Do you believe that he was searching for another victim while he was out at that hour? I mean, it, that would be pure speculation on my part. Anything is possible. As the question was already raised a little early, I mean, we know that in, in that hour, Two thirty in the morning is when we experienced some of the violent crimes that we saw. So I mean, anything is possible. We just don't know that for certain. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, in terms of when this came together, there was a lot more focus um, on the homeless deaths in New York originally. Um, I know you put out press releases, but um, some people I interviewed who were homeless yesterday wondered why they weren't in earlier that there was sort of a killer on the loose. Can you address that? Yeah, because everything did not come together on the initial scene. The initial scene, uh, the person didn't even realize they were shot. The guy thought that he was being robbed at the time. So it wasn't really a correlation at that point. We made the correlation at the point where the uh, forensics started coming back, and that happened right before the uh, NYPD cases started to occur. So we had something to offer something to share, you know, not just forensics, but also an image uh, to really kind of pull things together at that point. So it's just really timing, evidence collection, and processing that got us to where we are right now. Okay, let's take the one here. Maybe yeah. Beatrice Peterson, ABC News. Um, do we have any indication that this guy targeted any other people in any other Thank cities? You. So I've, I've heard some, some rumblings about that. Uh, we're doing everything that we can to check. Yesterday, uh, Commissioner Sewell spoke of the uh, major city chief's uh, call that we had yesterday with uh, all the major city police departments around the country as well as some federal partners uh, to talk about any similarities in other cases that they have. Obviously, we'd be looking for any, uh, the first thing would be any ballistic uh, links that would, would point us in a direction, but short of that, uh, we're looking for any information that community members uh, may have uh, to offer that may help us in this case. If you know this person, uh, there were crimes in a particular city where that person happened to be, uh, Mr. Brevard, that is, uh, that would be helpful to us, but we're checking through files just to see if it's anything else that's out there. Uh, any, again, no stone unturned. Can you say as to whether any police departments have contacted you after hearing about this case about him? No. Other than to say congratulations on the closure. Uh, at this point, uh, he's over at the, well, right at this point, I'm not, uh, as of about maybe an hour or so ago, he was uh, being processed over at the uh, homicide branch. Uh, over, yeah, at a homicide branch. At the latest, probably tomorrow. It depends on what's happening uh, in that space, and I'm not. I just don't have any visibility into what's happening there right now. Federal charges? They could come at some point, but not right today. Right now, he's being charged with the things that we've already talked about. Thank you. Last question, Thank please. You. Thank you.